This session is going to be about prospectus that is issued by a public limited company. So let us see what a prospectus is. Prospectus is basically an invitation that the company makes to the public inviting shares, inviting to subscribe to the shares of the company. So for the same reason, prospectus is issued by public limited companies because private limited companies or private companies don't issue shares to the public. So this is for the same reason, this is applicable only to the public limited companies. So this kind of shows the company's prospects with respect through, through which uh, the company is going to raise funds by issue of uh, securities. So basically the prospectus shows what exactly the money is going to be used for and uh, that which is collected from the public and, and the like. So let's see what the definition of prospectus is as per the Companies Act. So to define prospectus, any dos document described or issued as a prospectus and includes any notice, circular, advertisement or other document inviting deposits from the public or inviting offers from the public for subscription or purchase of any shares in or debentures of a body corporate. So from this, it is evident that it is issued by a body corporate. So body corporate meaning a public limited company. And it is it, it could be anything. It, it needn't be a document which has a name uh, prospectus written on it. It could be any notice, circular advertisement or any other document which has been prepared for the purpose of inviting the public to subscribe to the shares of the company. So this is defined in the section 2, subsection 36 of the Companies Act of 2013. Now, these are some of the contents of uh, the prospectus. So basically, the contents of the prospectus would include the name of the company, the registered address of the company, objects of the company, purpose for which the issue has been made, what is the nature of business of the company, capital structure of the company, what is the equity debt uh, structure of the company, name and address of signatories and uh, number of shares subscribed by them. So signatories with respect to the prospectus, who all are the people who sign on the prospectus, what are their uh, uh, name and address and what is the number of shares that is subscribed by them. Qualification shares of the directors. What what is the shares that have been that has been acquired by the directors in order to remain in the position of a director? Particulars of debentures and redeemable preference shares. Remuneration of directors and promoters. Minimum subscription for allotment. Date of opening and closing of the issue. Details of underwriters, underwriting commission and brokerage, name and address of auditor, company secretary, banker, trustee of the company, particulars of material documents, expected rate of dividend and voting rights. So if you see, look at the contents itself, you can understand that how elaborate this document is. So every uh, aspect which a prospective investor would require in order to make a decision with respect to investing in a particular company is inserted in the prospectus so that the uh, the investors would not have a second thought regarding whether he needs to invest in this company or not so every information with respect to the company would be uh, would be should, has to be given in the contents of prospectus so this again is a uh, is, is a mandate with respect to the uh, Companies Act. Now, what are the requirements of the issue of prospectus is what is listed here. So it should disclose all the material matters with respect to the company. It must be dated, it has to have a date. Now, this document has to be signed and a copy of it has to be sent to the registrar of companies. And only after it has been sent to the registrar of companies can the company go in for an issue. So before making the issue of the prospectus, what it has to do is it has to file it, file this document with the registrar of companies and after the approval of registrar of companies only can it go to the final public issue. Now, company also now with respect to there are a lot of agencies that are connected to a public issue like SEBI, stock exchanges, etc. So when the company is going in for listing, all, all these agencies are also involved. So for the same reason, approval of the SEBI stock exchange and other agencies connected to the issue have to be taken. 
and SEBI also examines the draft prospectus which is filed with the uh, SEBI that is also another mandate and it, it ensures that all the necessary disclosures and compliances have been compiled, complied with. Now there are different types of prospectus you know, depending upon what is the purpose by which the prospectus is issued. There are you can classify prospectus as red herring prospectus, shelf prospectus, abridged prospectus and deemed prospectus. Now let's see what each of them is in detail. Now first let us look at what red herring prospectus is. So basically we look, we saw what exactly is the contents of prospectus. So it, it when you look at a, an actual uh, elaborate prospectus, it will have all the details with respect to the company as well as the issue. So what is going to be the quantum of shares that would be issued to the public what is the price of the shares that is going to be issued. So all those necessary details with respect to the company as well as the issue would be uh, given in the prospectus, in an elaborate prospectus. So the disadvantage with respect to such kind of a prospectus is that if any shareholder would want to invest in a company at, a, um, at an amount higher than what has been quoted by the company, then the company would not be able to understand or would, would not be able to uh, know what exactly is the market demand. So suppose a company is having a really good market demand but then the company is quoting a price that is lesser than what exactly is the market demand. So the company would not be able to know what exactly is the market demand for the shares of the company. So in this case a red herring prospectus is issued by specifying only the number of shares that would be issued but it would not quote the price, a, a higher range and a lower range would be quoted and the investors, the prospective investors are given an opportunity to quote the price or bid for a price that is within the price range. So through this, the company is able to understand how much an in, a prospective investor would invest in the shares of the company. So, so for, for the same reason, the company can, even if the company quotes a price that is lesser than the amount, by looking at the market demand, the company can raise the amount depending upon what is the price that has been bidded for. So this process by which the company uh, calls for the bid with respect to the prices of the shares is also known as book building. So the red heading prospectus is issued at the time where uh, the, the issue is the price of the shares are quoted through the book building process. So let's see what red herring prospectus is. A prospectus which does not include the complete particulars of the quantum or price of the securities included therein. So it will not have the complete particulars, it will only have the sufficient information with respect to which the, the, uh, the shareholders, the prospective shareholders can bid for the shares. So this is issued in order to explore the demand for securities and the price at which securities may be bought by the public. It is not the final prospectus as company can update the information several times before the final issue. So before the company is going in for the final issue, a final prospectus has to be prepared quoting the quantum of shares and prices as decided after the bidding is over. So that is the, for the same reason. Red herring prospectus can be updated or altered as many number of times before the final prospectus is issued. Issuer company needs to file it with a registrar at least three days prior to the opening of the offer. It is named in such a way because it contains a para, a paragraph in red ink which states that the company is not attempting to share, sell the shares without the approval of the SEBI. So, the final prospectus would be filed with the SEBI and only after the SEBI gives a green flag can the company go in for the issue. So before all this or after all this process is over, the final prospectus is prepared and it is submitted to the SEBI and finally when, when the SEBI approves, the company can go in for the final issue. So that is what, what happens in uh, case of a red herring prospectus. The next type of prospectus is a shelf prospectus. Now, shelf prospectus is issued when a company is going in for multiple issues within a period of one year. So what happens is that every time a company goes in for a public issue, the company is supposed to prepare a prospectus relating to that particular issue. So in case of shelf prospectus, what happens is it, 
it is kind of beneficial for those companies that are going in for multiple issues for for a period of one year so this applies to basically public financial institutions and banks who tend to make issues more than uh, um, more than one time or multiple times in a period of time so what happen in a period of one year so what happens is that within that period of one year no much significant changes would have happened to the company which has to be updated in the prospectus so for the same reason shell prospectus would contain all those details which need needn't have in needn't have any alteration for the period of one year so this is prepared in order to benefit those companies that are going in for a, for a public issue for over multiple times for a period of one year so it is issued for a period of one year so this is basically issued by any financial institution or bank for one or more issues of the securities or class of securities specif specified in that document so what happens is that it enables public financial institutions and banks to raise capital from the public more than once without issue of a prospectus every time so this the validity of this prospectus prospectus is one year so what happens if there is any significant change that happens during that period of one year so that is the next question that arises so in case of the company is going in for a significant change over the period of one year then another document called information memorandum can be prepared so information memorandum would contain all those changes that has happened over the period of time which is not updated in the shelf prospectus so shelf prospectus would not have any updations for a period of one year so in case there is any significant change this can be up, this can be shown in the information memorandum so the if there is an information memorandum that is applicable what happens the shelf prospectus would not be valid by itself it would be valid only with information information memorandum attached along with it so that is with respect to shelf prospectus now the next kind of prospectus is abridged prospectus so just like how the name suggests abridged means summary so abridged prospectus is basically a summary of the main prospectus so prospectus being an elaborate document what happens is that a, a, a shareholder if he wants to make a sudden decision whether to invest in a company or not he needn't go through the elaborate information or the additional information which does not which is not applicable to him so the average prospectus is basically uh, it contains the salient features of the prospectus as mentioned by or as given by the sebi so by looking at the average prospectus itself or by going through the average prospectus a shareholder or a prospective shareholder can decide whether he needs to apply uh, or invest in a particular company or not so for the same reason only those details with respect to or which is directly connected to the issue alone is mentioned in the abridged prospectus so all those other elaborate details regarding addresses and uh, things like that would be omitted in the abridged prospectus so usually abridged prospectus is used in order to uh, in order to be given out along with the application form in order to subscribe to the shares of the company so this average prospectus is pinned along with the application form from which the through which the shares shareholders applies to or subscribes to the uh, shares of the company so average prospectus means a memorandum containing salient features of a prospectus as specified by sebi it contains the information in brief which helps the investors to make a decision investment decision quickly in this case company needs to attach it along with every application form for purchase of securities so the next kind of prospectus is deemed prospectus it is also known as prospectus by implication now deemed prospectus is issued in cases wherein the issue is done through issuing houses so the company does not come forward in order for a direct issue in this case in some cases so what happens is that it appoints intermediaries called issuing houses so they take up the tedious process of issuing the securities to the public so it is the company issues the securities through the issuing houses to the public so in such cases what happens is that a deemed prospectus or prospectus by implication is issued so this is done because it is the it is the inter intermediary that uh, that gives out the shares to the uh, to the public 
So the document, any documents that the issuing house issues for this purpose is known as a deemed prospectus or a prospectus by implication. So this document which the company issues in case of, a, of offer for securities to the public is known as deemed prospectus. So this document is an invitation to public to purchase the shares of the company through an intermediary such as issuing houses. That is regarding the provisions with respect to prospectus. So to sum up, prospectus is a document that is that is uh, that is basically used in order to uh, to uh, invite the public to subscribe to the shares of the company. So for the same reason, it is not applicable to private limited companies. So prospectus basically shows. Uh, it, it it kind of shows a a, a, a window to the a, a window to the future with respect to the company through which the prospective investors can make a decision whether in order to uh, invest in this particular company or not. That's all for today's session. Thank you so much.